All right, so vector equations. Let's talk about how to deal with vectors in an equation format. We might use an expression like this. Vector A plus vector B equals vector C. And just by way of vocabulary, I'd like to identify which of these vectors I would call the resultant vector. Can you guess which one it is? C. Yeah, C. It's the result. The word is built right into it, OK? This guy here is what we call the resultant vector. So people say, find the resultant, calculate the resultant, or resolve the system of vectors. This is a system of vectors, and we could say that we want to resolve this system of vectors. In other words, find the resultant. That's the vocab, OK? So we'll get that out of the way first. And so somebody might say, resolve A and B, add them together. And if we set up a, a reference frame like this, north, south, east, and west, and of course every time we set up a frame of reference, we want to identify the positives and the negatives. So this is no different, positive, negative, positive, negative, I could say, let's resolve vectors A and B, where vector A is 5 meters east, and that might look like this. And vector B is 10 meters east, and that might look like this. And obviously I'm drawing not necessarily to scale, I'm just sketching this out. I'm going to trust my math skills here. If somebody said to resolve those two vectors, we might do something a little bit like this. A plus B. And if I were to tell you that math people talk, and physics people for that matter, talk in the language of adding vectors A to B in a tip to tail fashion, can you see what I mean by adding them tip to tail? Tip to tail? You know, the tip of an arrow and the tail of an arrow. Like, it's like Lego blocks that got to snap together in a certain way. You can't put them tail to tail, or else the Lego blocks kind of fall apart. That's the way it is with vectors. Tip to tail addition. Always, always, always. So if I added these guys up, of course, diagrammatically, you're going to get vector C as your resultant. Now, algebraically, though, let's do it algebraically. We'll sub into this. A plus B. And this is like the simplest sum that I can do. Vector A plus B equals C, fine. A plus B is 5 meters plus 10 meters. And you notice when I'm adding them, they're both, po both positive values. Why am I making them both be positive values? Yeah. Yeah, they're both east equals C. And really, we could say 15 meters is the resultant. And I, I know that this seems like, oh yeah, why is he being so, uh, so condescending? I'm not trying to be condescending. I'm trying to make the first example the simplest one I could. Okay? 15 meters east. Not just positive, but east. All right, I want to try some other vectors, another system of vectors that I would like to resolve. We did ABC. Let's do uh, XYZ. Okay? Well, XYZ. Let's keep it Canadian. Okay. Hey? Do some X, Y, Z, eh? Adding up some vectors. Have some uh, maple syrup later. All right. X, Y, Z. Okay, X, Y, Z. Let's sum this system of vectors up. Only I'm going to define what uh, X and Y look like. Vector X looks like this. Tip to tail, or sorry, tip and tail. From, from the tip to tail of this guy, it's going to be 4.0 meters. And we're going to use the same reference frame of north, south, east, and west, defining north as positive and east as positive once again. Will that be true? No, you don't have to. But this time, I'm saying it's advantageous for simplicity's sake. Oh, yeah, Just like up isn't always positive and down isn't always negative. All right, so y is going to be. 
16.0 meters in magnitude. And you notice that I'm not putting the positives and negatives on here because the actual picture itself indicates what it is. And I'm not even drawing it to scale. I'm just showing that it's a bigger arrow. And if you want to draw it roughly to scale, it'll help you to see if your answer is reasonable or not. Okay. Yeah. So 16.0 meters in magnitude. Now, if somebody said, let's resolve this system of vectors, if I wanted to draw it out diagrammatically, it might look something like this. I might say, okay, vector x, and I'm going to color code it. Vector x goes like this, 4.0 meters. How could I draw vector y next? What's the next thing I should do? Yes. Like, like sort of curly in the air? Yeah, go in the other way, tip to tail. So where this guy left off, the next guy's got to start. And it's kind of hard because they're both in the same dimension, back and forth. But if it's a little offset, it's not the end of the world. And we could say, OK, so vector y. And I like to color code just because it makes it as clear as possible. 16 meters going back the other direction. And so I could say, all right, so 4 meters that way, 16 meters that way. How far am I going to end up going west at the end of this? 12 meters, right? Yeah, 12. 1, 2. So let's do it algebra I mean, uh, yeah, algebraically. Because you can see it sort of pictorially that this, yeah, it's, it looks like it's going to be a resultant vector z that's out in this direction. But let's do it with numbers, numbers and symbols. We've said to the east is positive and to the west is negative. So I'm going to say z is equal to x plus y, positive 4.0 meters, plus negative 16.0 meters. And you could write minus 16.0 meters. There's no reason why you couldn't. I just chose to write it this way this time. So plus negative 16 is going to give me negative 12.0 meters. No problem. That sort of reflects what our picture looks like. And if we'd drawn our picture to scale, you'd get exactly 12.0 meters. Okay, a little back and forth there. Now that's one dimensional. I want to tackle two dimensional though. Yes, sir. Would you then write another line that's positive 12.0 meters west? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. 12.0 meters to the west. You're right. We should add in the words at the end. Yeah. Never insert the words throughout your math. So complicated and confusing. Keep it in the symbols. Thank you. All right. In two dimensions. Oh, can I, should I leave that for a second? I'm going to slide in some paper very sneakily from the bottom then. And I'd like to talk in two dimensions. 2D vector addition. 2D. Yeah, back and forth in a straight line is one dimension. Two dimensional vector addition. 2D is our short form for two dimensional. Right. So once again, um, I'd like to, to define my reference frame the same way. I'm not trying to switch up my reference frame here. We'll get into that later. Call north positive, south negative, east, west. Positives and negatives are going to stay the same throughout this. I want to define some vectors. The first vector I want to define is 7.0 kilometers to the east. The next one is vector A. It's going to be 6.0 kilometers north. And I would like to figure out if I can solve this sad vector addition, or resolve it, I should say, to get vector D. Sad, sad, sad. OK? I'm going to get vector D out of this situation. And some people might say, oh, well, the, <coughs> if I resolve this system of vectors, the answer is 13 kilometers. What do you think, true or false? Well, I want to figure out exactly how false that is, but it's totally false. The answer isn't 13. If you ever wrote 13, I'd say you're a nut. You didn't consider the directions. Can you add this up with just, with just the numbers, or do you have to do something? Yeah, You've got to draw that picture. If you don't draw the picture, you are out to lunch. You're ridiculous. Um, so S plus A, I'm going to do it in order. Not that you have to necessarily. We'll talk about that later too. But vector S is 7.0 kilometers. Vector D, tip to tail, sorry, A rather, tip to tail, is 6.0 kilometers. 
And again, I'm not going to indicate the directions because they're indicated by the actual diagram and the reference frame that's provided. Um, what's special about uh, north and east in terms of angles? By definition, what's their relationship angle-wise? Yeah. By definition, they're perpendicular to each other. Okay, so we could say that's perpendicular. And if I draw in the, uh, the D, the, the, uh, the final vector is, the sort of completes this, the resultant vector, what kind of a shape am I going to form? A triangle, but what specific type? Right angle. Yeah, right angle triangle. So we've got our vector D. So there's a, a little theorem that rhymes with Rythagorean. What is it? Oh yeah, Pythagorean. I didn't rhyme very well. But D is equal to the square root of S squared plus A squared, or D squared equals S squared plus A squared. Okay, so let's plug in our values here. S is equal to 7.0 kilometers squared. A is 6.0 kilometers squared. We'll square root the whole shebang. And 7 squared is 49. So 49. And then the kilometers also square. But that's okay because we're going to square root them at the end and it's all going to work out. Plus 36 kilometers squared. <coughs> and if we add 49 plus 36, quick head math, 85 kilometers squared yet again. But it's okay. We're going to square root them. And if we square root it, we're going to get something in the neighborhood of, and I only know this because I did it before. I'm not doing this in my head, okay? 9.2195, more or less, okay? Kilometers, and we could say that's approximately, because we're going to two sig figs here, 9.2 kilometers, okay? Approximately. And you might say that's the answer. But check this out. Is D a vector or a scalar? Vector. So we've got a magnitude and units, but what are we missing? Direction. Bingo was his name all. Okay, so we've got to get a direction, and according to grade 10 math, I'm able to do it. I can get that vector direction. It's just an angle, right? And you probably remember this quite well. So katoa. Which trig ratio, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent equals opposite over adjacent, do you think would be useful to find this theta value, given that I know this one and this one? What's that? Opposite yeah, opposite over adjacent. So I could say, look, I know the opposite and the adjacent. I could say tan of theta is equal to vector A over vector S in this situation, because I want to get that angle, because that has to do with direction, or theta is equal to tan inverse, and I'll sub in my values, 6.0 kilometers over 7.0 kilometers. Oopsie. I should have put my bracket all the way down. 6.0 kilometers over 7.0 kilometers. Now the kilometers cancel out, so we don't have to worry about the fact that there's units in there. But 10 inverse of 6 over 7 ends up being, and yes, I did not do this in my head, ends up being approximately, or actually, as close as I can get, 40.601 degrees, or rounded to two sig figs, approximately 41 degrees. And now, so somebody says, okay, so the answer is 9.2 kilometers, 41 degrees. Uh-uh, you can't say point yourself 41 degrees, because 41 degrees relative to what? And so we have some resultant vector, and if I take a cross, like the north, south, east, west type cross, and I say D goes off like this, at 41 degrees, give or take, and I want to tell somebody how to point yourself in that direction, I'd say, okay, 9.2 kilometers, fine. Start off pointing yourself east. Then rotate yourself 41 degrees towards what? North. The north. That's how I could express that full vector, okay, the resultant. Or I could say, Rotate yourself 41 degrees towards the north of the easterly direction. 41 degrees to the north of east. 
Both of those are equivalent and equally good ways of saying it in my books, okay? Now, there's going to be the odd person that says, oh, I'd really rather say it north 49 degrees to the east. And that does express the idea, but what your textbook will have is the smaller of the two angles, so 41 degrees as opposed to the 49 degrees. They're both valid. You could explain it in both ways, north 49 degrees east or east, east 41 degrees north. Both are valid. People prefer the smaller of the two numbers though, okay? And that's what you'll find sort of fairly universally, unless I sort of mess up a solution set or something as I give you the answers to something. But that's, that's where we're gonna leave that one off. There is no homework related to this tonight. It's something I wanna have simmer in the back of your mind, okay?